Hi, and welcome to part 6b. In this small part, we'll do a couple of things. Start with a sort of slight issue that's been plaguing this almost since part 1, which is how to get the cards to appear in the right order. So let's drag these in. What I mean is if I drag this card, it stays behind the footman, where ideally whichever card is in your mouth, shows you want one that appears higher up, and it fix that as well. First of all though, with general improvement to code. So if we go to our card base, what I've said a few times is basically when you've got the codes is the same kind of thing, it's better practice to throw them to function. And in my physics process, basically every state is doing roughly the same thing. I'm just moving a card. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to basically combine all those together into one big function that will handle all my card movements, resizing, and re-rotations. So I'll call that function move card. And I'm going to pass it a few variables. Uh, first, I need to pass delta. That's the same delta that goes to my physics process down here. I'm also going to pass what state I'm in. So in hand, in play, etc. I'm going to pass what time scale I'm using. So what I mean is each card moves at different times. This is in mouse time. This is in mouse time. This is zoom in time. So I'm going to pass that as well. After that, they also need the target positions, the target scale, and the target rotation. Okay, and they're most of the same things as they are the regular code. And as sort of a template, I'm just going to nick the card for and the card for in play. I'm going to copy all this stuff straight in for the time being. Okay. So let's get it looking nice. So first you notice that this card for will work for us. So one thing to notice is we have this if we parent loop. We're going to want this to trigger if my state is um, in play. So I'm going to say if state is in play, we can then run this loop. Okay, now we've done that, what we're going to do is we want to tell it to run this function. So let's copy that down into the in play code. So if moon to play, you want to run this. And I'm doing any of this stuff here. However, now we've got the problem that we don't know when to run this final bit of code saying moving into play is false. Okay, so let's do a quick variable here. We're going to add to uh, my move card function. It's going, to compare, it's going to be called finished. That's basically going to tell us whether or not this loop is finished. So once it's once gone to this line, we're going to say finished is true. And then return finished. So now we can change that to say that if move card da 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 da. And that then means. If it's gone through this loop and then returned finished as true, we can then move on and just say move it into play as false. Okay, so here the state is in play and the time scale is the same as down here was just in mouse time. Okay, so that should be working. So if we were to play, we'll just run this code instead. And we're now going to basically edit the rest of these to do the exact same thing. So if mouse, we want the exact same thing. I'm going to copy this bit of code down here. Here, I don't want the loop cover stop, so I can basically ignore the if part and start to run it repeatedly, because the target position is going to be the global mouse position. And again, we're going to change everything here to make it match. So rather than in play, we've got uh, in mouse, the time's fine. Here, my target position is this bit of code here. The target scale, you can see, was my original scale. The target rotation is zero. Okay, and again, that should work absolutely fine now for the in the mouse code. Okay, and if one, we can check that. We can run that to make sure that those two bits of code are working fine. So one was grabbing it for mouse, which is fine, and one's putting it in play. Both of those are working just as well, but a lot more compressed format. So moving on, we've now got the focus in hand code. This is a bit longer, but it follows roughly the same idea. So let's copy this bit of code in here again. And we need to see what we need to change. So let's copy a bit of code in here. Look at our focus in hand. Uh, the code's a bit messy because I've got this if loop here. Of course, we can work with that. We can plug that into my function, but I don't really need to. What I'm going to do, I'm going to basically go through my code, and when it says go focus in hand, I'm going to basically define the scales and rotations as they are right here. So let's do that now. So we search focus in hand, and the only place it's actually called is when my mouse enters a card, which is here and here. 
So in this case, we have a card in play, and in this case, we don't. So what we're going to do up here, yeah, I'm just going to copy these lines down, I'm just going to refer back to them. And we can use that to define my target scale and my target rotation. So if card in play, my target scale is going to equal, I would write here, the start scale times zoom in play. I've also got my target rotation, which is just to find a target rotation, so I don't need to change that. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing down here. So state and focus in hand, I need to say my target rotation is zero, which you see over there. And my target scale is this fella here. Okay. So we've done that, that should work absolutely fine now. Uh, last thing we need to do is we have this loop here. This basically tells us when to make the other car spread apart to make way for the focusing card. Turns out I could just throw this in the setup code. So I see that now in my new function. And we're going to have the same kind of loop we had for if state is in play. So copy that in. And it's slightly more efficient if I just use an else if loop. So if the state is focus in hand, run this bit of code here. Okay, before that will work, we're going to change these things again. So uh, state is focus in hand. I think I'd zoom in time. And then fingers crossed, that's actually working absolutely fine. Let's check that and hope for the best. And there we go. Yes, yeah, so the exact same thing, but now my cursor's a lot more compressed, which is generally always a better thing. Okay, moving to the next thing, and that is moving drawn cards to hand. So again, let's copy this line down here. And let's see what I need to change. First of all, my state is move drawn card to hand. My time is draw time. And here we have a special case where I've got these lines of code that I don't have anywhere else. Okay. So let's copy those. And again, I need a special case back in my mega function. So I'm going to say, if the state is move drawn card to hand, I want to run that alternative code for the uh, rectangular scale. So everything else, or well, the alternative would just go in the else loop here. So if we move drawn card to hand, we do this bit of code instead. For every other state, we just run it like this. We can now just go back to here. Uh, one thing I must do, I must change my target scale to be the original scale. Okay, that code's now working fine now. If we check it, we've got a slight problem that the cars go super quickly. That's just because I haven't yet changed this in mouse time to be the more global time scale. Let's change that now, that will now fix that bug. And we can move on to the next case, which is reorganizing hand. Again, same problem as before. Uh, we have the if card in play loop. So let's find where I go to the state. Let's add these lines in manually. The main place it's called is moving neighbor cards, reset and neighbor cards, and down here where I um, exit, where my mouse exits the card. So in this case, move the neighbor cards. Um, I am not in play. So let's get the not in play code, which are these two lines here. I want target rotation, it's just target rotation, that's fine to change that. And my scale is original scale. So we're going to say the neighbor cards target scale is going to be the original scale. Okay, and I want the exact same line here. So again, my card is not in play. And lastly, when my mouse exits the card, do the same thing here. So target scale is original scale. And when the card was in play, I wanted my target scale to be my old scale. So that's that part done. So this line here. We've got this special case here. I just think an axe whenever I um, drag a card into play, I've got to reset my cards back to the old positions or let go of a card. So let's copy that in as a special case up here. And that is going to live here. Okay, so we're going to say if the state is reorganized hand. And they also need card in play to be false. We then want to run this bit of code here. Okay, and that should be everything for the organized hand. Uh, next, let's copy this line down here. Let's change a few things. 
Here the state is the organized hand. My time is the organized time. Uh, target position is target position. My target scale is just target scale. So I can delete everything except my very last if loop, which tells me uh, what state revert to. Okay, just spotted a super quick bug. Um, if I drag a card into play, you notice it keeps on growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. That's because this target scale is based on the start scale. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger the more we times up by it. So we need to fix what the base the start scale should be, and that should be the scale it has to be so that it fits inside the card. So that's going to be, we need to get the size of my card. So vector 2, and that's the two card slots with their sizes mixed around. And then just divide that by the current size of the cards. We almost need to change that's this bit of code here that basically enables it the cards to reset or the reset card function to work. So let's cut that out and that can go in the setup. So another line here. And let's plug that in there. Okay, that should be everything we need for reorganized hands. We just have one last bit of code to a change, and that is the moving drawn card to discard. So again, we can copy this in. This state is move drawn card to discard. The time is draw time here. You can see my target scale is my original scale. Uh, my target rotation should be zero, so there's no rotation when it goes in the discard. This target position needs to be defined somewhere else. Let's do that now. We want to define the target position when I first call the state moving, moving card to discard, which is down here. There's no way to call it, so that's absolutely fine. And that bit of code should have gone here, actually. Oh, and last thing we need to do is define the target scales for organized hands. I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so after that, the code's a lot more compressed, looking a lot more user-friendly. Next thing we're going to change is we're going to have it so that when I click and drag a card, it's going to appear above all other cards rather than behind some other cards, which is obviously ridiculous. This I've kind of been avoiding since part one, where basically the age old question was, what's better to pick? Do I want to have my card base scene having a root as a margin container, which allows me to use all the code such as mouse entered and mouse exited? Or do I want a, a node 2D where I can control Z index in terms of which card appears above or below other cards. Turns out to make it work properly, I have to use the best of both worlds. So now I'm going to throw in a new root to this node, which of course is going to break a few things, but we'll live with it. I'm just going to call that dummy root. So to make this the parent, we'll make it the root. And we're going to use this a lot because of course this has an index that I can change, that will then change all its children, as in my major card base. So let's go through making that change now. Okay, it's going to change a few things. Um, made a thing in card base. Before, whenever I went to the uh, root node, I would go up two nodes, such as here. I now need to go up three nodes because an extra node to go up to. So let's add that in now. Copy this. Finds in a place. And we're going to place all of these, go up two nodes, with go up three nodes. Let's replace all of those. Next, I've got one node. I now need to call an extra bit of code at the end. I now need to say after we've got the child node, we now need to get the node. And of course, I want my card base node. And again, same as before. I now need to go up two nodes. Let's replace that. Okay, and then do the exact same here. Okay, uh, that's the change we need to make in card base. We now need to do a few things in play space as well. The next change we need to make in play space, we see that this code won't work because the card base instantly whenever it's not 
assign stuff to it, or assign it to my dummy root, rather than to my card based root. So let's just add a temporal variable here. I was going to say from my new card, just get the node of card base. Okay, and all these new cards we're going to replace with temps. Okay, not this one because I actually calls the card itself, so it's going to stay as it is. Next, we're going to do the exact same set of changes in organize hand. And again, everywhere I see card, I'm going to place with temp. Okay, and that should have made all those changes come into place now. So now the code's in the exact same stuff. But now I have this power that because there's a uh, node 2D, we can now change the Z index to make cards appear above or below other cards. So let's do that now. I'm going to change that whenever I first click on a card. So if we go up here, we have is action press left click, and we then say state in mouse. I'm also going to say go up a node and then buff the Z index. Okay. The reason I've added two is that when we click on a card to highlight other cards, we can attack potential targets. That increases the index by one. So I want to go one more than that and go to two. I want you to undo that code whenever I basically let go of a card. We want to say here, get the Z index back to as it was. And that little change should have fixed that like, issue where the cards weren't over overlaying properly. So here now this card above all the other cards. And the same is true for this card. Okay, that's it for part 6B. Didn't quite fit into the full part. But there's a few minutes of code that's going to help us a lot more going into part 7, 8 and beyond. As always, thanks for listening and I'll see you shortly for the next part.